Hello chess lovers, Sorin here and this is the recap of 2023 World Chess Championship match game 4. Since there are tons of recaps in the internet, I decided to do something different. I decided to go through this game while Stockfish 15.1 is running on Chessify's powerful cloud servers and the speed goes beyond 1,100,000 KNS speed. With this being said, now let's go for the game. Game 4, Chinese chess grandmaster Ding Liren opened up with English opening c4 to which Nepo answered with knight f6, knight c3 e5, knight f3, knight c6, e3. Uh, after turning on switching to uh, chess e5 3, we can see that in here the main move is g3, but with e3, white is like deviating from the main move, then comes bishop b4, the main move, and now in here was the main move, queen c2 made in the game, uh, castling and bishop takes c3 are popular, uh, Nepo chose the second most popular continuation. So far you can see that the evaluation is equal. This supercomputer is evaluating the position as equal, nothing special at the moment, both players are developing their pieces. Knight h5 comes as a first choice, yeah interesting. On an ordinary computer you won't see knight h5 popping up as a first move, but definitely Nepo had some preparations with supercomputers. Although again knight h5 disappeared, yeah, and then again it uh, it pops up as the first move. Very, very interesting. So knight h5 is a well prepared line definitely by Nepo. d4 comes by Ding Liren. So he's bringing the knight to f4, and then uh, queen f6 is Angie's first, first choice, but we have knight f4 straight away. But if knight h5 was a preparation by Nepo, uh, I guess it's logical to expect queen f6 then, instead we have knight f4. Bishop takes f4, e takes f4, white castled, queen f6, rook e1, Rook e8, both players are making very accurate moves. Rook e d1 pops up as the first move. h3 is also among the alternatives. Bishop g4, is this the first move? Yes, bishop g4, and now since the knight is unguarded, black attacked it. Knight d2, knight a5. So knight a5 is definitely a dubious move. Instead, Rook a d8 is preferable. Not sure what Nepo had in mind when going for this move, but time will show that that move is not that good. Dink instantly uses his chance to go for a pawn sacrifice and then play e5 and get a very dangerous mobile pawn center. d5 then comes. And yes, we can see that Stockfish is evaluating the position as equal, but from a human perspective, playing this position with the white pieces is of course easier. b6 trying to somehow switch this knight into the game from uh, b7, for example. Is b6 a top move? Yes, b6, h3, bishop h5, bishop e4. Bishop e4, a top move. Amazing, amazing accuracy by Ding Liren. Rook e7, black is doubling up his rooks on the e file. Is queen c3 also a top move? Yes, yes, Ding Liren, you are a machine. Queen c3, you are a supercomputer. Rook e8, bishop f3. Bishop f3 is among top moves, yes. Bishop f3 by Ding offering the exchange of light squared bishops. Meanwhile, Nepo is trying to find a better square for his knight. We know that the knight on the rim is dim. Here, uh, bishop takes h5 is the move suggested by Stockfish, but Ding decided to double up his rooks on the e file as well. What's going on? f6, well ok, f6 is ok, but you are gradually finding yourself in a very difficult situation, although black secured this d6 square for the knight. Knight d6, 
rook e1, white is still not hurrying to exchange the bishops and finally at this point we have bishop takes h5, queen takes h5, rook e4, queen h6, queen f3 and knight d4. Knight d4 is a fatal mistake, knight d4 is a fatal mistake, although in my case uh, my laptop uh, engine gives plus two advantage immediately after this move, while in this case the supercomputer's evaluation looks more humble. Better is playing g5 and protecting this pawn in that way. Instead we have rook d8 and without hesitation, like after thinking one minute, Ding went for an exchange sacrifice. c takes d4, knight b3, so we have two targets, g5, Okay, d3 is the move according to supercomputer. New variation, queen takes d3, and then what? a6, what is this move guys? Okay, let's make g6. Knight d4 for example, how is black going to hold this position? Okay, queen f8, then rook g7, these are some crazy lines, guys. g5 looks more logical, of course, but we can see a huge change in evaluation. Queen g6, and now g4, and now white is securing this f5 square for the knight. If you want, capture and pass on and make a move like, I don't know, Waiting king h8, the knight f5, and yeah, this is allowing knight f5 definitely is not good. That's why just f takes g3, and now let's see how Dink realized the advantage. Knight f5 anyways landed, rook h7, queen e4. Yeah, the rest is just a matter of technique. So all in all, Nepo played this game well. But that knight d4 was a huge blunder. Although with d3, supercomputer suggested that it was possible somehow to survive, but that was a crazy line. Now this pawn is a target, rook h6, rook d8 is coming, f5, here check, king f7, check. Crazy guys, I'm wondering uh, from which point on a forced mate appeared. <laughs> Queen e6. Ah, okay, from here on, suddenly. Wait, when did a forced mate appear? Rook d1. f5. I already were forced mate in 22. 25. 23. This is crazy. Check. King f7. Check. Yeah. Another check. What a terrible position. Queen f8, black resigned. Yeah, if rook g8, simple rook d8 is winning. So this is it, dear chess lover. So if this type of an analysis uh, was interesting for you, let me know. Maybe I should also cover the second game using uh, a supercomputer. The game was also a dramatic one, a decisive game. Once again, let me know what do you think about using a supercomputer when analyzing this world championship match. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video. Take care.